it brought up the thought for me that there's so many parents, um, especially moms, they have to, they're like Pinterest, so like, oh, we have, I have to have that perfect Pinterest birthday party. And I like, I have to post it on Facebook and then Instagram and show this, show the world, this family that just all the perfect parts of it. And it puts such a false sense of what families really are um, yeah. that I'm now yeah. just seeing friends and family members leaving media, social media, because it's, it, it, there, it's creating an anxiety um, in the mom and in the parents, which is then, I think, showing up with, um, with ripples effect. It goes into ripple effect. Um, yeah. So my question is, have, since you've been doing this for over 20 years and Instagram and Facebook did not really exist um, back then, neither did Pinterest, how are you seeing that affect the parents and the family, like social media in general? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's been, it's been interesting because again, like when, when I first started, like um, I actually started off as a, a camp director, you know, I worked as a camp counselor all through college and then became a camp director and was running a summer camp. And so, I mean, we were really isolated. I mean, it wasn't even that we didn't have the internet or anything out there, but it was that, you know, the kids were totally pulled out of their families and you have kind of this uh, microcosm for a week where you bring these kids in there. And, and, and what we kept on finding was you'd have these huge life-changing experiences with these kids when we got them away from everything that they were comfortable with, you know, when, when all of a sudden um, they didn't have the option of what they were going to eat for breakfast. It's like, no, the ladies made, you know, pancakes and French toast. And so that's what we have. Sorry, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so these kids would come in there and, and what at first was kind of like a, like a struggle because also we didn't have this personal choice. They, they kind of bonded together with everything. Um, and, and so kind of transitioning through, um, you know, uh, going from, from summer camps to working with churches and working in, uh, uh, church, uh, youth groups. And then on into, um, that actually kind of got me into marriage and family therapy because I saw so many kids that were struggling. And I realized like at a certain point that it wasn't just the kids that were struggling, but it was also the parents that were struggling with how to, how to handle their kids because they had this, this love for their kids and they just, they, they wanted their kids to be happy. They wanted their kids to be successful, but, but they, they, you know, just struggle sometimes to kind of find that line. And I think so much social media has come in and just, um, just kind of blown that up and it, it's blown it out of proportions that if, if you don't have these things, if you don't do these things, well, you must not care about your kids then, because if you don't drop $500 on a birthday party, you know, who are you even? So, um, you know, so, uh, we, we go back to, um, we go back to like, what, what's important to, um, you know, to us as a family. And, and it's so easy to get kind of sucked into that mentality. Um, you know, I remember a few years ago when me and my wife had moved into a new house with our kids and, and it was kind of nicer than what we were used to. And so we all of a sudden had like people wanting to like drop by and visit with us. And I had this like anxiety all the time that like this house has to look like it came out of a magazine all the time. Like never mind the fact that we have like three kids living in there with us. And at the time it was like three kids and a dog and a cat. You know, it's like, you, that that's not the real world, but I had all this anxiety in there that what if somebody just like walks down the street and rings the doorbell and wants to come in, you know, is there going to be like clothes on the sofa or something? And then I realized like at a certain point that if somebody's not my friend because we've got laundry on the sofa or because our cats knocked the food bowl over, then they're probably not a great person anyway. And they're probably not who I want to have as a friend. And so, you know, the kind of friends that we've kind of called it down to over the years are, are, are people that we can really lean on and people that can come into our house when we get a dishes full, of, uh, a sink full of dishes and uh, they'll love us anyway. And they'll love our kids, you know, no matter what physical stuff we have going on in our lives. Then. And that's, that's really what it gets back to. Like what, what's really truly important to you. 